Okay, so a quick review, Algebra 1, we're going to multiply radicals, and so a simplistic form here. Notice that the indexes match, right? So we, it's a variable, it's an n, the square root times square root, cube root times cube root, the indexes have to match. So that when you multiply them, you'll have that same index, and then you simply multiply the radicands. So a times b. So we end up with the nth root of ab, all right? Pretty simplistic. So let's take a look at uh, one example here. You got the square root of 6n times the square root of 15n squared. Now here's what a lot of students do. They say 6 times 15 is 90, n times n is n squared, and then times z. And they say 90 n squared z. You don't want to do that, all right? Don't let that be you. For one reason, we always want to look to simplify before we multiply. Now again, we can put them under one radical and simplify, or we can do it right now before we multiply things out. And so you want to simplify before you multiply, and you want to do it right here on this step. So what do I mean by that? I'm looking at the 6 as a 2 times 3. I'm looking at the 15 as a 3 times 5. And now I'm saying I can simplify this. What do I, it's a square root, right? What do I need to get a root out? I need two of them. I have two threes. So the square root of 3 times 3 is 3. And see, I just got a 3 out. Not only that, I can get an n out. There's one n. There's a second n. I can now get an n out. Okay, now there's not two of anything left. And now I'll finish it off. And now I'll do the multiplication. 2 times 5 is 10. And we just have a z. And there it is, 3n times the square root of 10z. Simplify before you multiply, S-bomb, all right, S-bomb. All right, what if you have some coefficients? In other words, what if you have multipliers of the radicals? Not a problem, right? Just like math, it's very orderly. Anytime we have a multiplier of anything else, we multiply them. So a times b, and then times the nth root. Notice again, the indexes match. And then we're going to multiply radicand times radicand, right, xy. And there you go. And don't forget, we're going to S-bum, right? Simplify before you multiply. S-bum or you'll be one. All right, here we go. Oh, boy, look at all that. You're like, whoa, there's just too much stuff. Hey, just relax. It's not hard. First off, note it's a cube root. Always note what type of root it is because that tells you how to simplify it. So we got a cube root. Okay, so cube root, I'm looking for three of things. All right, let's do some factoring of the numbers. 24 times 5, 4, 2 times 2. 25, 5 times 5. Ah, look at that. 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5. The cube root of 3, 5 is a 5. I know I'm getting a 5 outside. Okay, what else? Oh, 1n and 2 more. There's 3n's. Cube root of 3n's is an n. I'm getting an n out. Am I getting anything else out? I am not. I am not. Okay. So I have a 5n out already. Let's go ahead and deal with, it's going to take a little bit of simplifying here to get everything finally done. So I have a 5n out. Let me do this in red. Now let's multiply coefficient times coefficient. Negative 2n times 5 is a negative 10n, right? That's that part. And now radicand times radicand cube root, and I'm getting ready to go off the page here, so let me see if I can squeeze this in. 2 times 2 is 4 times p times z, 4 pz, and let's finish up by simplifying. Let's multiply this out, so you get negative 50 n squared times the cube root of 4 pz. Hey, very much doable if you'll simplify before you multiply.